We got some deadlifts today, so we're gonna go through some of our common cues, how we set up, different ways you can create variation with it, and uh, talk a, bit, a little bit more about that big compound movement. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Let's get started. Deadlift has plagued me forever, and Vernon's gonna show you why. <laughs> I have I'm normally long torso, so we do a couple different things for me. Just set up grip position, just so I won't, I won't tweak myself, because sometimes my ego gets the best of me. And yes. also, we don't know anything about kilograms, so we have to do- <laughs> A little bit of math? Yeah, a little math. <laughs> Deadlift is one of those things where we talk about the exercise fitting around the person. No matter the height of your body, the length of your body, the shortness of your torso, the length of your limb, the bar comes from the same spot, but we can play way around with different setups to make it a little bit more personal to you. So when I think, first think about a deadlift, when I think about most of the tactical people I've worked with or even general population in general, when you tell some people deadlift, they instantly think, some people like, oh my back, ah, I can't do that, man. It's not a good lift, I don't wanna hurt my back you're going to pick up stuff on a daily basis from the floor, from awkward, precarious positions throughout the entire day in most jobs, yeah. especially if you're in the tactical population, but being able to put force in the ground correctly in a safe position, I think that's key. So let's just start with a traditional deadlift setup. So when DJ sets up to the bar, what are some cues you're thinking about? I'm trying to think about where my hips feel the most natural, not too wide, not too narrow, and then really being comfortable in my hand position. For the longest time I did a posing. Yeah. And then I had a strength coach tell me that every single time they've ever seen a bicep rupture, it's from opposing hands. Oh, you're gonna be weaker doing palms facing towards yeah. you, but you will not blow out a bicep. And tearing a bicep is number two on my list outside of tearing a pec. I am hyper vigilant because I've come really close. Like I've almost blown them both out. Yeah. And I I'm pretty paranoid about turning the hand over to that supinated hand position yeah. unless it's like a deal breaker, like you have to pull, turn that hand over to get those reps. And even then I'm like, man, you're probably turning your hand over on your highest working set as well. Yeah. So I'd rather just be here. If you even need to use straps because your grip's not quite there yet, I'd rather do that, honestly. Yeah. That was one of the things about the ego lift, like, you know, pulling double bodyweight deadlift, but now these opposing grips, and now I switch them over, palms facing wards, and I have to drop down 50 pounds. You're dropping down 50 pounds. Eventually yeah. my grip's back up to where my body doesn't really know the difference now. But yeah, I've come really close, man. At the very end of it, it's like, oh, you can feel it, dude. Yep. It starts to burn a little bit. To me, I look at it like your ceiling might be lower. Or the weight you may lift at the beginning might be lower, but your ceiling is much higher because you have much more room for growth. All right, what are we queuing? Typically for me, I walk up, shins are kind of on the knurling. Yep. Just about. My hands are on just the outside. I've messed around with throwing hands out super wide. And I feel like for me personally, it puts so much pressure on my shoulders or I start to lean too far forward. And I basically start to do a lot of lower back movement. But if I walk up with a contact point, I feel like it, to me, it feels a little more natural. I kind of go one thumb out, get a standard grip. So from the knurling, one grip out, that puts me just outside of my, just outside of my calves. When I stand up, it feels comfortable to me. Yeah. Really thinking about keeping my feet flat against the floor, not rocking up my toes, not really rocking back on my heels and then feeling comfortable sinking into it from the 90, pick a spot, eight, 10 feet out in front of me. And then as I pull, it's pushing down to the ground, driving up, not really extending too far back, but squeeze my glutes super high at the very top. And then kind of keeping that same tension on the way back down. When I, when I used to do it back in the day, I'd really lean back into yeah. it. And the heavier you get, I feel like that's when I would always tweak my lower back. I'd be fighting that last bit and just, uh, yeah, just not letting my body get in that kind of position. Two, two big things we've worked on with DJ, and he actually just cued him on himself, actually, is when he sets up in this original deadlift position, his eyes being eight feet in front of her, him, that's a big thing, because when he gets up to the top, his eyes are still staying in that same point. But he's bringing his hips forward nice and tall, because like he said, when he used to reach his hips forward, it's probably because you were looking, changing eye position, throwing your heads up, reaching back, thinking very circular. And then as well, DJ said one of my favorite words when it comes to deadlift, he said push. He didn't even say pull. And I think that's a cue that's huge because there's a big difference between you just setting up and you're getting ready to roll and you're like, <sighs> you see people like yanking the bar, trying to get tension and then just go <clears throat> and they just yank and that puts that shoulder in that weird position. You're yanking from this loose shoulder position. You're just pulling with momentum versus what DJ said, locking everything in, getting nice and tight. Like he said, eyes and push. Now that push position, you're getting that hinge, you're loading it from that deadlift, pushing from the floor, but you're pushing away, more than likely getting a good amount of leg drive. 
What are you doing for your shoulders? Are you locking these things in position, creating a little bit of tension? I feel like if I don't, they get a little sloppy and yeah. I get a little bit of movement in them. So I, I've, I mean, there's different ways we can cue this, but I like, some people have said like pack the shoulder, like squeeze oranges, retract scaps. But if I'm thinking big compound lift, I'm thinking as much tension and stability as possible. So when we do all our rows and stuff, we're letting the scaps move. I don't want the scaps to move here. No different than a bench press. So let's lock everything down. The goal is much weight as possible or good technique as well. Nice and tight. I like to kind of get out of position before I get in position. It almost kind of like helps me blend those. So I'll kind of be out. I'll set my hips, lock in. I'll feel the tension. It's like a slight nuance, but you, when you deadlift, do you feel the bar come to the top of the plates? It's like, it's like one of my favorite things because to me, it's like that gas pedal, like, okay. But these bars and plates, as nice as they are, you don't really get it. No. And it kind of sucks Yeah. <laughs> because like, you're waiting for it and you're like, that's it, but it's still a little click. Yep. But that click lets me know that I'm pulling tension. Yep. Um, when people pull something from the floor, I'll give the coaching cue of like, send your arms out. If you were to tow something, I wouldn't just have a loose chain yep. and just gas it. I would get that tension, nice tension, nice tension. Now go. Get all the tension out of the bar and yep. then go. Yeah, we used to reference just taking the slack out. Yep. Take the slack out, get it. I have control, not that uh, try to just rip it from the floor. Like, yeah, really sell into it. Yep. Sitting into the hips. DJ was doing it on his own. Sitting into the hips. Whatever feels comfortable for feet position. He likes a little bit of a narrow grip. So do I. Some people like that wide grip. Not, not really for me. But hey, everyone's body's different. Push through the floor. Finish on the front side of your body. Thinking about squeezing my glutes. Getting tall. What are you doing for grip pressure? Are you squeezing as tight as you can? Are you trying to save your grip for the heavier loads? I, I, personally, when I'm warming up, I'm like, I'm gripping the shit out of the bar. So am I. To me, it, I don't know if it like helps connect things, but it's almost like it's go time, baby. Like yeah. when I grab it, it's like uh, treat your, treat your warm up sets like your high sets yeah. so that when you get to your high sets, you've been there. Yeah. yeah. Back when I first started lifting, I feel like my grip was the first thing to fail. So I, my warm up sets and even really until I got the high weight, I'd kind of have a relaxed grip. Like I don't want to fatigue, don't want to fatigue it, but I'd start to do what you're saying. I wouldn't take the slack out of it. Vice really gripping this whole thing, locking down my wrist, my forearms, everything's connected. Now I push to the floor, stand up with it. Yeah. Now I'm in control the entire time. I don't know, for me, it's, it's really helped me because for a long time, I kind of bound by straps. I feel like a lot of guys get into that. Like, oh, if I don't have straps, I can't pull, I can't pull. Well, you really can if you build in the foundation from sure. the very beginning. Yeah. So someone like DJ, he brought up the good point about his body type. So someone that's very short, compact, a deadlift is a great exercise for them because they're kind of in position to pick something up. You probably have a friend that's really short and they just stand up with it because the bar only has to travel from like here to here. And you're like, well, of course that looks fucking easy. Yeah. Uh, but someone like DJ, long limbs, we go, we prop it up. Let's go out of that 20 kilo. Yeah. Please. No, we have no idea how much weight this is. <laughs> 44 ish. <laughs> Um, so if we were to set up from the side and watch DJ do this one, maybe can we get him this angle right here? So now we put him in a more optimal position to pull from. So deadlifts from the floor, I love having a slight elevation, whether it's a trap bar deadlift or a straight bar, it just puts him in, in a better position to push from. And we're already doing RDL, so we program RDLs as well to get that long hinge. But if we're picking something up from the floor, I like being from this advantageous position. Same kind of stance, still into, I really like these for trap bar. I, I feel it's so much better from trap bar. Yeah. If not, like, it's got long limbs, man. That's a long way to go from the ground. I feel like- I, It's a long way to go. I feel like I get a lot of body English into it sometimes, especially as the weight climbs. Even though I'm trying not to cheat it, I'm trying to take the slack out of it. As soon as we'll put on anything, yep. it's like, so much more connected. Yep. I feel like I don't have that, even like a squat, like that butt wink at the very bottom when you kind of lose position. I feel like I, I can always maintain it. Well, I, I've even seen people that'll say like, well, how functional is if you're never pulling from the floor? We're doing all those exercises. We're doing like the straight leg RDLs. We're doing like the single leg. So we're getting deep in the hinge. But if the goal is high amounts of weight, high amounts of volume, why would I not put your body in a position that, that's better fit for you? Because the deadlift isn't for everyone. You have to make the deadlift fix your body type. Now this setup, this kind of locks DJ in here. Now he can set his hips. He's kind of at that tall hinge, boom. He's ready to lock on eight feet in front of him, drive hips. He's thinking about meeting the bar, finishing on the front side of his body. 
It's a great lift. Bar drags down the thighs, setting up in that good position. Boom. What do you think when you're going down to the ground? Not, not, letting, my, not letting my nose and not letting my eye focus come down. I feel like if I do that, I really start to stick my ass down. It comes down more like an RDO. Yeah. Which is fine until you have super heavy weight. Yeah. I'm really trying to keep my spine accountable. I got, I got, lowered straight I got like two pet peeves when it comes to deadlift. Or I, got, I, mean, I guess I have a lot actually. But uh, for one, people that treat this like it's light and they treat it like it's light, well, that, that's not helping you. If you go up to take a, if you're getting ready to go up, step up to the plate in baseball, you wouldn't get into the on deck and be like, you're gonna get in there, watch the pitcher. It's the same thing. Even if it's light, set up. So it's, it's like these videos that you see people on Instagram sometimes where you can't tell the difference between their form, whether it's 135, 225, 315. To me, that's like magic because it's like they treated every rep the same. And the fact that their reps didn't change, that's not by accident. No. And then the last one is if we got eight reps, someone on the eighth rep, they finish like this. Yeah. You did everything perfect for yeah. seven reps. And now you're going to go get fucking hurt on the last rep, just lack and lackadaisically going through it. Ah, it drives me nuts. Yeah. Or exhaling at the wrong time. I feel like I struggled with that for a long time, trying to figure out when I'm going to take my breath. When, when do you when... take your breath? I try to take it to the top of the position where I feel like I'm, I'm the strongest. Mm. Or if I'm, gonna, if I'm gonna reset at the bottom, I keep a full grip, I'll get a full breath, and then I'll stand back up with it. It's that mid-range, it really gets dicey. If I stand up, I start to lower it down, I start to exhale, it's like, <laughs> I can feel my spine kind of shaking. It's like, yeah. I don't want that, I want to build tension, but not make myself black out either. <laughs> to me, that's a, it's that gray area, because when I personally do it, I'll hold my breath the whole time. Yep. But if I'm coaching someone, I'm like, they're like, well, when do I breathe? Uh, I mean, the second you breathe, you lose it. Yeah. So like, it's like, do you breathe some sort of time breathing? Or I, I personally, like, I, I just, I like pressure. It yeah. helps move weight. I do too. How much pressure do you have that bar against your shins? Because I know a bunch of guys, they'll put on, or the guys with heavy knurling, they don't want to drag it across their shins because it hurts. Yeah. Right? Like, I've got a big thing. Like, I always try to skip over my knee. So I'll hit a contact point here. I'll basically skip my kneecap by a 16th of an inch, hit bottom thigh and come up. I try not to, but I naturally do it. Yeah. Just trying to figure out what's I th the best I thing I think to do. it's, we have similar body types. You have longer arms than me, but uh, those people that are riding their shins, it's because they're in this squatted position so much. So, like, they have to overcome this angle yeah. to go up where I like when I'm deadlifting to be in more of a hinge. So I don't have to like, I might bump my knee, like you said, mm -hmm. but I'm not scraping up my shins, but it's just a technique. Some people like to be in that like deep squatty and it's like they have to drag their shins. Yeah. I personally don't want to bleed over the bar. <laughs> when you get to the top of it, how tight are you squeezing glue to the top? It's, it's it, that's my anchor. It, as tight as you can go. Yep. To me, to me it's either you anchor with contraction or you anchor with structure. So if I'm either going to anchor by locking my knees out, pelvis dumps forward, I'm locked in, lumbar extension, or I meet the bar, squeeze my glutes, and my muscles are holding that position. Yeah. Powerlifting-wise, maybe stacking is better because you're going to be able to move a lot more, not a lot more, but more weight because you're, it's easier to stack bone on bone. But we're not lifting for that. We're lifting, obviously, for most weight, but I want to be safe. I want to be strong, functional. So I'm, I'm cueing the glutes. How about you? As tight as I can go. Yeah. I mean, like for me on rep one, I can hear my pelvis pop. Yeah. You know <laughs> so, what I mean? Like we do those drills that you squeeze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And reset. Like th that's my goal. I squeeze as tight as I possibly can, just so I'm really connected to it. What do you do for grip? Do you do a hook grip? Man. Standard grip? Because I've tried that hook grip. I. And it just, it doesn't work for me, but I feel like it should. And I, I try it. I'm going to be honest with you. I just don't like it. <laughs> I don't either. And like, but, but I want to, because I see what, all these people talk about it. It just, to me, it, it hurts so much. When I learned Olympic weightlifting, uh, they were trying to teach me that. Cause you'd be able to pull more. And what that looks like is getting your thumb in and then obviously wrapping your thumb underneath your hands. My thumb really isn't even long enough to kind of have that, but like, yeah. Yeah. Like, so it's almost like you're creating a wedge for your hand, which makes sense. 
But man, the, the heaviest I pulled, I felt like I was going to rip my thumbnail out. Yeah. That's not fun. No. So I, I just like a simple pronated hand grip. It, it feels comfortable. It feels good. And like DJ said, it, versus this, where you're putting, exposing your bicep to so much tension, yeah. this is a lot easier setup. And, and, and if you need to use wraps because you're really trying to load weight, understandable. But building yeah. the grip, you're just creating this feedback loop of creating yeah. functionality and that, that bleeds over to all of your lifts. Yeah, trying to get a grip that feels comfortable. It's like we do with everything else. Try to get one grip that, same one I'm gonna do for pull-ups, same one I'm gonna do for bicep Absolutely. curls or whatever else. I don't know. Just trying to make it feel repeatable. So when you get in that position, it's like, oh, I've done this a million times. Yep. This feels just like that. It's not, the only time I ever hook grip is for hang cleans or deadlifts. I'm like, I don't really do that too often. Right? Yeah. It, I, I, I think there's something about finding that pocket as well on your hands. So some people like, grab too high on the, like the, the fat pads of their hands with their fingers. Mm -hmm. I like to like, so when you set up with your hands, you have the, the callus port of your hands, like that fat pad. Mm -hmm. I almost like grab and then try to like, yep. okay, is that the, how you do it? I do the same thing on the bench press. I really try to rotate that thing over and get in a solid position yep. where I have full contact with it. It's not gonna, not gonna move, not gonna wiggle out of position, not gonna slide. So it's almost like sitting, pushing into that fat pad. Yep. Cause I've had some people that'll grab and they'll do it that way. And I'm like, man, it feels like it's just coming out of my hands when I grab it like that. I have the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Try to get a full pad on it. Try to really lock it in. Try not to let my wrist move too much. The same thing on the bench we were talking about yesterday. Yeah. Really trying to get connected. What's your feels. foot, what's your foot pressure when you're setting up for a deadlift? I try to do my whole foot. I try to remember toes down. Yeah. I try not to lean too far back, but I feel like sometimes if I, if I lean too far forward, I'll feel my heels come off just a little bit. And then I'll try to sink my heels and I'll feel my toes come up. Yeah. So I try to get my feet wide and I try to think about my pointer toe, my big toe, and I'm trying to hook that thing into the ground and kind of meet it at a 45 with my heel mm. and try to squeeze my feet together. So widen out my feet and then try to grab tension and lock them all in. That keeps, for me, equal pressure all the way around. Vice. I started getting this kind of maneuver. Or at the top of it, I'll lean back, my toes come up, I'm like, no, 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 no. That, that I mean, yeah, that's it, definitely a thing. It, uh, when you set up at the bottom, it's normally solid, but when you start getting heavier, because you push so hard into the yeah. floor, you start to see like your momentum going, uh -huh. and that's definitely something. But then you see your feet catch it. Yeah, <laughs> it, like, I'll get to this part, I'll squeeze my glutes, and my yeah. toes will come up yeah, a little yeah, bit, I'm like, yeah. go back down there, go back down there. <laughs> Look them up just enough, like, oh. Yeah. yeah. Trying to be accountable the whole time. Absolutely. Which that looks a good movement, man. It is, man. Like, big universal thing. Somebody told me way back in the days, like, strongest people in the world pick things up from the floor. The super strong people pick it up and they put it over their head. But either way, it's coming from the floor. You have to be able to get this thing from the floor. The faster you can do it, the better off you'll be. But really, the thing we talk about the most is training for tomorrow. Like, nobody cares if you can do a triple bodyweight deadlift if you can only do it once. And now I'm broke for the next six weeks. Like, that's not a thing. Yeah. You know, that's really the thing we push every time. We got Davis in here, like pulling some big heavy weight, egos get involved. And I think we're pretty good about checking each other. Like, yeah. hey, you want to go up? No, because the last one didn't feel smooth. The last one felt like it was forced, it was rushed. We'll drop down and kind of rebuild up. That's what we did this week on Monday. Yeah, when it comes to deadlifts, it's not letting your ego get in the way. There's, if, if you lift for an entire year and you deadlift every week, you're gonna deadlift 52 times. You shouldn't be going for it 52 times. You no. should be building. Building, building, and then if you feel good, maybe you maybe you shoot for the stars a day or two. But like, if you zoom out of any training plan, you should be like, all right, take it easy, check my ego. Well, and here's a great debate: what is more important, be able to pull the weight off or be able to pull off the weight without straps? Oh, ah, uh, mixture. Per, my personal opinion: without straps. I feel like I mean, it's at no point am I if I'm. Like if I'm on a boat or something, if someone falls and I got to reach and grab them or, you know, if I got to reach up and grab something and pull it, I'm not going to be like, well, let me hook my strap up. Like you should be able to be strong without straps. But maybe if you get to the top end of your deadlifts, maybe your top two working sets and you're like, man, I can't hold this. Yeah. Then, then you put straps on because you're really trying to fatigue that posterior chain. But you, you need to lift without the straps because that's more, I mean, that's, that's what we're training for. We're not training to be the best deadlifter. We're training to be the best tactical athlete, tactical professional, best dad, mom, wherever you are. So with that, we need to be able to do things without the, the constructs of help.